So today is uh, Monday, Thursday, no, Monday, July. I think it's July 5th or 6th. So we've got all the national holidays behind us. We can get down to work now. And uh, I finished the flooring. And uh, on uh, just on Friday of last week. So that's pretty cool. One of the things I forgot to mention on that flooring video was that I glued down all of the these uh, sheets of plywood. Use the uh, the large tubes of of uh, the glue that they pr provide for that. So that on the top of each floor joist, I put a bead of glue, and that way uh, it eliminates, or at least eliminates to a certain degree, any squeaking and so on. Because later. Let's face it, as, as wood ages, it shrinks and moves around a bit, so that helps to prevent that squeaking in the future. So I got here early, before 8 o'clock, because I was ex expecting a shipment of lumber. I wanted to uh, direct the guy as to where to put everything. But uh, it's already here, so those guys are pretty diligent. Trouble is, it's not really where I wanted it, but I guess that's okay. I hope to have this all wrapped up this week so that's what this video is about is uh, laying out the walls and framing up the house so let's get to work I'm laying out the uh, stud walls now so I've been measuring uh, measuring the foundation relative to the floor framing and checking that against my blueprints and so I've made a determination that uh, I'm gonna, I, I, my, I snapped a chalk line for this back wall and it normally would be three and a half because that's the width of a stud wall. I brought it to three and a quarter though, just to kind of uh, rationalize the difference in some measurements. For example, the uh, it's not 100% square and perfect. The uh, the floor framing uh, it's square, but the the lumber itself is a little bit out of whack. You can see, for example, how the plate of the two by four sticks out a little bit past proud, you could say, of the rim joist. So. I figured that uh, three and a quarter inches snap my chalk line so now I'm going to uh, assemble the wall on the floor and erect it let's do that now I'm putting my uh, top and bottom plate down I measured them to be the exact length for this wall which is 20 foot and 9 inches this is a measurement I got from the trust company they said the uh, you know, in order for the trusses to land exactly where they need to. So they gave me some real clean measurements, so that's what I'm going by. You can see that it's it does stick past the floor a little bit, a half an inch on each side. So that's what I did. So now I'm just uh, measuring out my 16-inch centers all the way down on this... Uh, on the top and bottom plate. Uh, I'll just mark it here on one bottom plate and then I'll take my little square and uh, transfer that mark across to the top plate. And uh, so I'll do that and then what I have to do is, is locate my window. I have a window in this wall so I'll locate where that's going to be because we have to frame that in too at the same time. I've marked out where all my studs go along the top and bottom plate and here I put a measurement for a stud wall because this is going to be a bathroom and it's going to be five feet wide I'll probably make it five and a half five foot and a half inches just for some wiggle room but that's at the five foot mark right there and then this part's the bed or a closet so two feet over I marked out another where the stud wall is going to go and that way I could find the center of the actual bedroom so I did that there's the center of the actual bedroom and then I have a window with the rough opening be 79 and a quarter by 57 and a quarter so the width I, I marked that out on my uh, top and bottom plate identified that that's where the window opening goes there and there so when I frame this up I won't put any studs where the window is going to go. I'll show you how we do that. I'll put studs on each side and then uh, while it's laying on the floor there 
being assembled, I'll put the header in and then frame in the, uh, the actual opening. Junior's working hard here backfilling. We had Braden here on the weekend moving some dirt around with his backhoe and I told her not to do that because it gives her tired arms but anyway she's being disobedient. So what I have here is on this corner, this is the top of the wall right here and I have this little step down because because uh, as you see over here I've got this concrete post. So I having this is going to be a covered over porch so I have to carry a beam from that corner over to there, a lamb beam, three pieces of two by ten. So. Uh, so I have to leave this notch out so I can have something to rest that 2x10 on. So I've got this frame and I'll probably put another jack jack here, like 2x4 to hold up that. And although it's not really going to be doing anything, these here too are going to be holding up the weight. So I've got it all framed up and I'm doing my window now. So as you can see, I've put my 2x10 two, two headers. It's a fairly nice sized window, 6 foot window because uh, well, we've got this nice scenery back here. Maybe we'll take advantage of it. That's what I figured. And uh, so now I've just cut my uh, jack post here. And uh, I'm going to put the jack post in. Nail those bad boys in. And then, uh, then what I'll do is I'll measure up from the floor up to the uh, rough opening, height opening of the window. And I'll frame this part in and it will go from there. I've got the window framed in now. My header, I use a two by 10. I like to use two by 10 on all the headers, even if it's just a short span. And that way later on when the house is done, the tops of the windows all, they all line up with the same line. I don't get this up and down, which I don't like personally. And uh, also begin, I'll be doing brickwork on the outside. And it's nice to have one single height to gauge my brickwork out to so that it works out nice for that carrying lintel afterwards and so I've got the, uh, the little wall that goes underneath my window the rest of the stud wall is all framed in so the next thing I have to do is uh, you see I've got it pretty pretty much lined up on the chalk and I have to line this wall up perfectly along the chalk line toenail it in exactly where I want this wall to be then I'm gonna have to square it up and use wind bracing because I'm not going to be using plywood sheeting or any kind of a like a oriented strand board or anything. I'm using styrofoam type insulation. So I need to use a metal wind bracing. I'll show you how that works in a bit. But first of all I got to line this thing up perfectly and square it off so it's exactly square and then put my wind bracing and then I'll be able to put my styrofoam cladding on. So I've got the wall all ready to go. I toenailed the uh, bottom plate right to that chalk line. There's a toenail right there. Where is it? There it is right there. One every couple of feet. And then I uh, I just put a nail in uh, in the bottom plate. One here and one there. And then I measured uh, one corner to the next on the uh, stud wall just to see if I have the same measurement. That way you know it's square. And then I did a, a 3, 4, 5 sort of formula. I actually did 8 along the bottom, 6 up here, and then 10 across for the hypotenuse. And it's square. It says it's square. So now I'm going to put the wind bracing on. So I got my piece of wind bracing and I just laid it on there on the uh, stud wall. So that'll go on the outside. And so I'll just mark that, like, uh, I'll just mark this with a pencil all the way down. And then I'll run my skill saw along there at a sh fairly short depth, half inch or so. If you look at the profile of this, it's like a T shape. So this part here will be embedded in the 2x4. And then this flange part will be nailed onto the 2x4s with uh, two inch nails and that'll make it totally rigid. So that's what I do instead of, that's what you have to do if you're not gonna use plywood or something like that. But right now it's starting to rain out so I'm, I've got my things covered up and I'm gonna run away. I marked the two by fours with this wind bracing lying upside down on the stud wall. And uh, 
I'll show you now I ran my skill saw just along those marks that I made. Nice fine cut. So now I'm just pounding the wind brace into that slot. And so it's a nice tight fit. That's kind of key to, to its strength. See that? So you pound it in real nice. Pound this. And that's just one width of the saw blade. Nice tight fit. Sorry if this is a little loud. Then this can be left hanging over because it's gonna overlap that edge of the plywood floor anyway. Same with up here. I actually have another two by four goes on top of that. You have to double up the top plate. So now I'll nail that on with the uh, two inch nails. So here I'm going to nail it. Here, here we go. And now I'll, uh, this end I got the window opening, but I'll cut a couple of pieces so that I have some wind bracing in here too, on that other corner. I have my wind bracing all in place. Two nails on each stud, and then over here, because I had a window, I cut my wind brace into two pieces. So I have one coming from this top corner at the correct angle, more or less as if it was a complete wall, and then I put the, the leftover piece like that. So I'm good to go. So now what I'm gonna do is fasten the sheathing on. This is the inch and a half exterior sheathing. Now some people, some folks, they would uh, put the walls all up and then go around afterwards, put the sheathing on. That's probably a, a better way of doing it, but it's really time consuming. You have to use ladders and scaffolding. And, and this way I can put the, uh, the insulation board on easily and then tip the wall up with that already on. The thing is when I put the insulation board on, it's an eight foot insulation board but my walls are going to be more than eight feet obviously because I have this rim joist here that I have to cover so I'm going to measure that. That should be nine and a half plus one and a half is eleven and then my three quarter inch plywood so it should be about eleven and three quarter inches <coughs> that I have to overhang the silver board or the insulation board. I have to overhang it past 11 and 3 quarter inches so that when I tip it up it will cover that rim joist and nest real nice on top of that block wall. Let's see how that works out. So I have my insulation board lying there exactly where I think I want it to be. It's uh, sticking out past the uh, bottom plate 11 and a half inches. That way it'll completely cover up my rim joist. Now some might say, hey, you're making a mistake. You should bring it to the top, flush with that top plate here. And then afterwards, it's easy to walk around on ground grade level and patch that, fill that in where the rim joist is. And yeah, you do have a point. You would have a point saying that. However, once my trusses are on, I'm going to want to extend this board right up between the, the, the trusses, the two foot, well you could say 22 and a half inch spacing between the trusses. I want to extend that right up into that. So there's going to be a bit of fancy work, some cutting. So I have to go up there and cut all that in anyway along the top of the wall because I want to block that spot off so that when he blows the insulation in later, it won't just go all flying out.
of the soffit. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. And if you think I'm nuts, that's okay. Uh, it's just the way I decide to do it. So I'm going to nail it on here with these special nails that have a big washer. And then uh, we'll just sheath this, this uh, stud wall in. So I've got the first board nailed on with these these uh, special nails that they ship for it. They got that nice plastic washer on there. They're pretty flimsy. They bend easy, so you got to be careful nailing them in. This is a very delicate kind of material. Real thin foil over top of the styrofoam, easily damaged. So, and you'll notice I'm using a piece of plywood there as I have to reach the further away places. I Put that down so that I don't damage this board. So now I'll put the rest of this sheathing on. So I got all the sheathing on and then Junior and I tipped this wall up. It was a bit tough. It's about as big a wall as uh, two people would want to do. And so I, uh, I've i got it nice and plumb. I've got the inside bottom plate lined up right along that chalk line perfectly. And then I've got a couple of three braces in here to hold it nice and plumb. So oh, hey, I got my first wall on. This is so exciting, you have no idea. Now I'm gonna put another wall. In fact, I'm gonna put a bunch of walls and then I'll get back on that. Junior's been practicing on the Ford 1710, which is great, because I don't really have time to do this. It's really, really great. She got it figured out. Gradually her scoops are getting bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud. I knew she could do it. There she's waving at us. I'm telling you, if anybody can make a tractor look good, it's her. She's a bit leery about coming real close to the foundation, but uh, as time goes on, she'll get a little bit more careless, like I have been. So it's July the 12th, Monday morning, and I've got most of the house framed up, all the outside walls, well, except for the garage. I'm going to be doing that probably tomorrow, and uh, a lot of the inside walls are done. I'll just show you a couple of details about that. Here we have the, the uh, master bedroom part of the house, master bedroom, bathroom, and ensuite. When we rough in these doors, uh, I want to put a 30 inch door so I have a 32 inch opening. Notice I didn't put any big header up there because it's not supporting anything, it's just for framing in. And uh, and after I put the stud wall up, then I put the top plate. And you notice how I overlapped the one top plate from one stud wall to the next just to tie it all in together. Show you a bit of that. Did it like that. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a row or a strip of 12 inch wide 6 mil poly so that when I insulate the ceiling, it'll be continuous.